Welcome, one and all. I've been reminded that we've actually been here for a whole year. I'm not sure how that happened. It was pretty rough in the beginning. It was pretty empty. It was a big empty space in there. And we gradually filled it up. We got, Janice, we got three months free. Three months free. Woo. And we're only here because this building is three quarters empty. And so they love us here. They're helping to fill it up. And they're very good to us. They give us the space here. We give us the conference room. And so uh, we're really loving it. And we're glad to have you all here. Um, so uh, many, many things are happening. And oh, events are coming up. This We're just starting uh, the busy season now. Program meeting today. We had a meeting with the NJTPA about funding projects um, yesterday. Um, like a pack on day is tomorrow, but I think that's going to get washed out. Okay. Well, we may not be shining there. Last time we tried to do that, in the tent blew away. So I'm leaving that up to Tim. Uh, I'm doing a tour at Historic Speedwell tomorrow. Um, if anybody hasn't heard of that and does want to come on that tour, let me know. Just grab me after the program and I'll tell you all about that. Um, coming up in June, uh, we've got uh, a, a, a new event. Uh, many of you have been to Waterloo, uh, Waterloo Canal Days. This year, we're partnering with the Byram Historical Society to have a much larger event. Many more vendors, many more people coming to, to speak and talk and demonstrate. Um, many more of the buildings will be open. And so hopefully you will join us for that. We're having a very good uh, partnership uh, with the Byron Historical Society and even, even state parks is cooperating. So that's going to be, we're, we're going to get our boat back in the water now. And the Indian village. I think I, yes. It's now Greater Byram Morris Canal History Day by committee. <laughs> Anyway, following that, there's going to be a Canal History Day at Breadlock Park, which uh, Tim and some of his uh, uh, associates are going to be putting on. Yes. And then coming up early in August will be Wharton Canal Day. And so uh, hopefully we've got our fingers crossed that possibly we'll be able to have the uh, uh, block tender's house uh, open. Uh, that has been held up by lots and lots of complications. It's a very big and complicated project. And so it should have been finished months ago, but it's still uh, holding on. The uh, uh, The house is almost done, very, very close to being done. But the uh, there are problems with the actual mechanical parts, the lock that are going to make it operational and they have not been fabricated properly. Federal funding, Bear says, yes, federal funding. And many or many other events. So please come and join us. Um, John, yeah, um, yes. This is Janice, and she is the office manager. She makes she organizes, makes all this happen. So we've been in this building now for one year and 19 days. We came out of a 20 by 20 square foot storage unit, and it's all in there now, so we can see it. So coming into a corporate facility, we also have corporate roles. Um, at 9.30, the cleaning crew will be coming in. So if you're planning on sticking around, you'll have to stick around outside, because we've got to put this build, this room back together again for the cleaning crew to come back in. Um, but you're more than welcome to adjourn over and give the office will be open. You can give John a hard time about the archives <laughs> and we'll bring everything over. So you can, you can have a nightcap sort of. <laughs> All right. there you go. And speaking of the archives, John Prytow has been doing a marvelous job. As, as Janice just said, we had our collection jammed into a, a very small, uh, climate controlled uh, storage unit for years, pretty much unaccessible, unusable. Uh, 
not seen by anybody. So John has spent an amazing amount of time getting it all together. Tell us. Well, we're not quite there yet, <laughs> but let's just say we're about, we're doing inventory. We're about 90% there, a little over two years. So we're pretty happy with that. Um, <clears throat> as Janice and Joe has said, uh, the, the space has been great. We got the climate control um, place to work. Uh, so that's been going very well. Um, speaking of numbers, <clears throat> we got a handle on about how many items we have, upwards of about 4,000. Have you folks tried the website search? I know a few of you have. <clears throat> if you go on the website, uh, canalsocietynj.org, there is a little at the top of the toolbar, there is a archives and bring it down you can search keyword or keywords and just go to town <clears throat> uh so we're we're good with the numbers um i have some of this stuff written down so i don't forget our organizing is <clears throat> pretty much complete everything is where it should be i think uh what we're doing now is we're fine-tuning optimizing <clears throat> And what we like to call a beta test phase, we're trying to <clears throat> look at the system from the user's perspective to try and get the bugs out. And we've been tested a few times, and I think so far it's not too bad. So I'd have to say that uh, maybe we got an A minus on that. <clears throat> so we'll work toward the A. Um, <clears throat> next step would probably be digitizing. Some of the pictures are digitized already. We're gonna to look toward maybe documents, getting them on a nice flatbed scanner, <clears throat> getting them digitized. So that'll be the next phase. And after that, um, I think somewhere down the road later in the year, we'll be ready to have visitors make appointments and come on in and take a look to do research. So that's where we're at. So hopefully you guys can come down and check it out <clears throat> for real. Not virtually, but in reality. Questions? In the meantime, check us out online. Visit our our, uh, our website and uh, pull down that pull down menu and hit archives and get in there and start looking around and let us know what you think. Let us know um, how usable it is. If it's, it's, if it's easy to get around, if you're finding things that are interesting, let us know what you think. Okay, now, Bill, we like to have Bill because he always brings us goodies. Yeah. This is my little uh, show and tell. Forget the microphone. First of all, I want to thank Joe and his helpers for bringing down the um, original one of a kind paintings that were up in our museum. Uh, the three best ones are right when you walk into the office on the right hand wall. Two by the late Alan Nelson and one by um, uh, the Pennsylvania uh, Rick Feller, the Pennsylvania Railroad calendar painter. Um, one in particular that Joe just brought down is the big, typical big Delaware and Raritan Canal steam canal boat going over the aqueduct over the four track Pennsylvania main line in uh, just south of the Trenton station. And my, I kept urging Joe because the Waterloo Village uh, Museum is not, for, no burglar alarm, no, no fire protection. This building is well protected as well as being a non-combustible building. And so what Joe is planning to do is take photos of those and put them up in the museum. That's the way. Now, for tonight, a couple of um, items that I brought in, and, and I'm most thankful for the archives and library. Every time I come up, I bring a few more boxes. And uh, my aisles are getting wider and wider in my house. Uh, <laughs> this, I thought, was a big deal. Uh, canals, railroads, and uh, roads, uh, 1828. Unfortunately, it's Pennsylvania, but maybe you can trade it to this. <laughs> uh, this We've heard of Pennsylvania. I had known about for quite a while, 
and I do find them on the internet every once in a while. They're not, not that expensive, painted by Ted Zaris, and it is called uh, the Golden Age of American Railroads. To the ordinary unknowing, that's what it is. But to us, we know what this is. Right, Ted? <laughs> It's the Delaware and Raritan Canal feeder with the Belleville Railroad going up uh, on the side. Uh, so that's for the Canal Society. I also, on my um, hanging on my wall for about four decades, was this Morris Canal feeder plate. You have one? I have one. Yes. You have one. Okay. We may, uh, in uh, uh, cooperation with Harry Rinker, we made these. There was a series of them. And I'm sure that. Some of the donations from the old timers to the Canal Society. Well, now you got an expert. Um, I have been for the last year digesting uh, collections of a former Canal Society member, Charles Lehman's. Anybody remember Charles Lehman's? Good friend of mine, uh, died in 97. Well, you know, you can only live so long, but he was a bachelor had a good job with Forster Wheeler, uh, made made money, and any book that he wanted, he would buy. Um, sometimes he'd buy three and four of the same book. Uh, he lived in Union City in the house in which he was born, and fortunately he had a very caring niece who uh, contacted me and said, do you like some of his stuff? I said, sure. Well, at the time, I didn't know. It was turned out to be 11 carloads. Uh, all the canal stuff goes, whether it's pencil, everybody, you get it, you get it all here. The rest of the stuff I basically box up and it goes to the National Museum of Industrial History and the Industrial Archives and Library. Both of these are in uh, Bethlehem, uh, you know, Lehigh Valley, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and they both are, have growing libraries. The, uh, the industrial library is a, is a private enterprise, and the uh, National Museum is the Bethlehem Steel Plant. And uh, they've also gotten 200 segments of rail that I've collected over a lifetime, and I had no idea that Charlie collected rail. I got over 100 pieces from him. They're going to go to, so they will now have over 300 segments of rail from all over the world. Great. Um, Charlie did stuff that I didn't know. I mean, I knew Charlie, but I didn't really know him. He was a very private person, but he'd go on one of my trips. This is 1990, I think. And he put together this whole book of photographs and articles and everything about that trip. You have several others from him as well. So it's just another little interesting item. Around the corner where you I didn't do that. Uh, around the corner where you have um, where you put your junk, your garbage.
when I was 30 to 40 to 45, no way am I going to jump from boats boat and walk walk a six inch plank to get to the boat. No, no way. Because you got no place to put the train. Thank you. Can somebody get the door? Somebody's coming to open up. Okay. Bill, if you lined up all those pieces of rail, you'd have your own railroad. Well, in fact, we built we built one thing I forgot to mention to you. We built a two-foot gauge railroad at the Mayan Collection Foundation located location over in Basking Ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the largest collection of restored Mack trucks in the world. Mm -hmm. And they are going to have an open house on September 9th of this year. Okay. If you would like to get an invitation, give me your email before you, before you go at the end of the day. Folks, listen. Okay. Thank you for all your donations. And thank you for the things you brought tonight. Thank you for storing it all. We are pleased you brought us some lovely things, some wonderful things. Okay, now we're going to get serious. Ted, our speaker, is going to tell us about the... Ted, come on up. <laughs> Ted, you, you were highly recommended as a DNR scholar and a marvelous photographer. So please um, uh, introduce yourself to the folks. Yes, You're going to use that right. one? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So I'm Ted Settle, spelled just like it does. Settle, settle down. Um, I live in in the Bridgewater currently. I lived in Boundbrook for 43 years before I moved into a life care place uh, where my wife and I are enjoying independent living and being able to do all the things we like to do without having to worry about taking care of a house. So I, I worked for over 20 years with the Office of Legislative Services in Trenton. So my trip to Trenton was 33 miles every day, 33 miles there, 33 miles back. And I started doing different ways, going different ways, and finally found the best way to get to Trenton was to go down Randolph Road in, near us to East Millstone and then pick up the Canal Road all the way down to Kingston turn right in Kingston, turn left at the first uh, light, and then catch a canal again to end up uh, by the Millstone, the Carnegie Lake Millstone area back into Route 1 and then Route 1 uh, on, on to Trenton. So I got do it, traveling that way. I got to see the canal and, at different seasons and different light and started taking pictures. And then I was taking a uh, online portfolio development uh, photography class with one of my favorite photographers. And one of the suggestions he made in developing a portfolio is to, to take a, an area that you can go to often in different lights and in different seasons. And that obviously was the canal, Delaware River Canal for me. So over a period of 20, 25 years, I've been taking pictures. I walked just about everywhere on the canal and i call the hidden treasures in central new jersey the canal but it's really treasure for those people who walk the canal not who run it or ride their bicycle on it if they walk or they're in in uh, canoes or stuff like that they can really see the canal and take time just to just to look 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 so this is uh i'm working on a book but it's sort of slow going but it will be basically a photographic essay on the canal. Um, and this will, will start, I think, this way, right? So uh, briefly, initially, it will just be a brief history, um, and it's all written, but I'll read it anyway, uh, and then we'll get to the pictures. So in the 1700s, early 1800s, the colonies and states were connected by a combination of made and nature-made trails, roads, rivers, and the Atlantic Ocean. In England, the canals had been, been developed in the late 1700s to provide safe, efficient, and relatively quick movement of materials from one city to another. In 1796, the Aston Creek Navigation Company was incorporated for the purpose of developing a canal that would connect the Delaware River to the Raritan River 
but no action was taken. In 1804, a legislative commission was established to determine the best route for such a canal, involving as little digging as possible. 1807, the report of the Secretary of Treasurer, Albert Gallatin, on the need for an inland waterway and specific recommendations for such an inland waterway. The War of 1812 and the British blockade of the ocean made an inland waterway even more important. In 1816, a legislative commission was established and John Randolph was hired to complete a survey to determine the best possible route. The report presents various alternative routes listing objections to each and then presented the route it determined to be the best. Lack of funds prevented any action being taken on these recommendations. And this was uh, the route he suggested was to dig, to climb straight up, go across to New Brunswick this way from Lamberton. Still no action. In the meantime, persons in the north of New Jersey plan a canal to connect Phillipsburg on the Delaware to Jersey City on the Hudson, a distance of 107 miles and requiring an elevation change of more than 900 feet a technological masterpiece, but limited in its weight-bearing capacity. And you know which canal that is. Another commission in 1823 determined that a feeder canal taking water from the Delaware River would be necessary to maintain the water level in the canal. The company incorporated to build the canal, but since waters from the Delaware are required, negotiations with Pennsylvania were necessary first. They were not successful. In 1825, the current route along the Millstone River was chosen by Canvas White, the eventual, eventual builder of the canal. And this is the route. So it starts down, okay, it starts down here in, in uh, Bordentown and then goes up to Trenton, meets the, the feeder canal in Trenton and then goes up along the you can see the route of it going up along Route 1 and then crossing. It goes up on the east side of Route 1 and then crosses underneath and then goes up uh, by Princeton, Lake Carnegie, along the Millstone River, and then connects to the Raritan River and then down to New Brunswick, where it empties into the bay and the, the uh, ships can go from there on to New York. So what did I do? Sometimes that happens. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, then, so there was competition for, between proponents for building a railroad and a canal. In 1830, the New Jersey legislature granted two charters, one for the Camden Amboy Railroad, one for the Delaware Raritan Canal. Shares for the railroad sold out immediately and only the intervention of the wealthy Stockton family in Princeton provided the necessary funding for the canal. The two companies were merged into a joint company in 1831 and included a clause preventing construction of, of competitive lines of transportation across central New Jersey for 30 years. The canal was finished in 1834, had 15 lift locks, one on the feeder and 14 on the main canal and two guard locks. Main canal locks were 24 feet wide and 110 feet long, much larger than locks on other canals. The original lock gates were miter gates with balanced beams. The original masonry lock at Bordentown sank in its soft substratum, and a replacement lock of stone-filled wooden crib was built a few feet to the west of the first one. The outlet lock uh, was constructed at Lambertville for a cable ferry across the Delaware River. It's, it was in operation until 1912, 1913. Its main purpose was to transport coal from the Delaware Canal to the DNR Canal, instead of going all, having to go all the way down to Philadelphia and then come back up. This made it much shorter. The head upstream gates of all locks were converted to drop gates. Today, the gates are gone, replaced by control gate structures, and you'll see those in the pictures. Main canal locks lengthened to 220 feet, Lock 5 in Trenton was eliminated and Lock 4 was deepened to compensate. Introduction of steam-powered propeller-driven boats in place of mules. The wake from these boats made it necessary to line the banks of the canal with stone three feet below the water level. These stones are still visible in many places along the canal called riprap. 
A second lock was added in New Brunswick, making lock 14 a double inlet outlet lock. In 1860s and 70s, the peak activity of the canal, uh, the canal carried about 3 million tons of cargo each year, the majority of which was coal. And starting in 1880s, the amount of cargo carried each year dropped off dramatically as the Reading Railroad began transporting for uh, coal. In 1933, after the canal closed for the winter of 1932, it did not open again. After three years of not operating the canal, in accordance with the terms of the lease, the canal ownership reverted back to the state of New Jersey. 1936, Trenton section of the canal, locks three to seven, are filled in. In 1954, this was a very critical thing, the adoption of amended decree by the U.S. Supreme Court, the provisions of which are crucial to understand the Delaware River Basin, among the provisions that the state of New Jersey is permitted to divert 100 million gallon, gallons of water per day, monthly average from the river, the Delaware River, without meeting any flow compensation requirements. This is because of its historic diversion for the operation of the Delaware River Canal. Had the state simply shut down the canal after 1933, there may have been a different outcome for New Jersey in this amended decree. This is a major source of water for central New Jersey. 1974, the Delaware River Canal State Park was established under legislation passed by the New Jersey legislature and signed by the law, into law by the governor. In 1980, more than a mile of the canal at the New Brunswick end, including Deep Lock 13, was destroyed for New Jersey Highway 18. In 1998, last mile, the canal and Lock 14 were restored and incorporated into Boyd Park, the city of New Brunswick facility. And then they built a footbridge over U.S. Route 1 in 2004, enabling hikers to continue on the towpath over Route 1 all the way to Mulberry Street in Trenton. The towpath from Lock 1 to Lock 2 near Bordentown has been refurbished. The towpath from Mulberry Street to Rose Street in Trenton has been reopened and a bridge has been com completed, enabling access to the towpath from Colonial Park in Somerset County. So when they decided to build a canal, these are the issues they had to resolve. They, they had to decide the route of the canal. They had to have a source of water enough so that when the canal was used, locks emptied, they would have enough water to keep the canal at, a, at an appropriate level. They had to determine the number of locks, lift locks, guard locks, bridges for existing roadways, lock and bridge tender houses. They had to handle the rivers and stream flow crossing the canal through culverts and aqueducts. They had turning basins. They had to protect the canal banks eventually. If there was too much water in the canal, they had to wait to get water out of the canal. So this is Bulls Island up in the north part of, north of Stockton in New Jersey. And this is the entry where the canal feeder canal starts right here at Bulls Island. That's, uh, I had a friend who was a pilot and he flew me around to take pictures sometimes. This is it from the ground. Delaware Raritan Canal State Park Historic Structure Survey, the watershed area of the canal, streams under the canal 222.9 square miles tributary 84.2 square miles and this is what the watershed area looks like this is flowing from new jersey into the delaware and this is the millstone basically and then others flowing into the millstone river in the raritan so these are the structures they had to be built uh, locks lift and guard 15 lift locks two guard locks houses 21 houses, bridge and lock tender houses, majority built in 1831 to 34. Colworts, 32. Again, the majority built in 1831, 34. Bridges, uh, spillways, basins, aqueducts, floodgates, and intakes. So this is the entry at lock one. And this is the, as I said, the, the original lock one began to sink in, it, in the soft, uh, the water of the bed of the creek. So they built another one, and this is the one that, that uh, they built. And this one you can still see. This is the original lock, lock one. However, it's worth a trip to go to uh, Bordentown. Bordentown's a very interesting city. You can have a good meal, lunch, and stuff there. But you need to look at the tides 
because the only time you can see the lock is at low tide. So it's a tidal lock as the New Brunswick lock is a tidal lock. This is this is what the locks look like now with the, the way the water flows. The, the, the lock is coming this way. And so the water flows over and goes down into the lock and then goes along until the next lock. Spillways, this is uh, Swan Creek, which is up uh, near Lambertville. And this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, overflow. And this is the other kind of spillways where they built the rocks. And then when the canal gets too high, it goes over. So the, this line here is, is about a foot, foot, foot and a half below the level of the, of the uh, canal walls. So, and then this is uh, Carnegie Lake. And this is the Millstone Aqueduct carrying the canal over the Millstone River. And then these are some of the bridges, the Harrison Street and Washington Street Bridge. The bridge and bridge tender houses. This is the Blackwell's Mills crossing. And this is the turnaround area inside canal after lock one. So now we'll start and take you on a journey through the canal. So this is the entrance to the canal uh, at lock one. And this is the way it looks now because they built this interstate highway, which extended the land uh, quite, a, quite a ways out You'll see in a minute. This is a Riverline Bridge over Crosswicks Creek. And this is the map of Bordentown that early 1872. And you can see how close the uh, canal is to the river prior to the construction of I-295. So there's the Delaware River, the entrance to Canal Lock 1 and Crosswicks Creek. And then this is the Bordentown Yacht Club. And quite a, right across from it, that little indentation that you can see is the canal entrance. And this is what you saw earlier, the entrance to Lock 1. And here's the gate uh, still there from Lock 1. And this is a tie-up post outside the entrance to Lock 1. And then looking from Lock 1 across the river, Crosswicks Creek to the Hot Club. And then you can still see some of the structure of Lock 1. And this is showing you the tide. So it's a tidal area. It's not, it's not just uh, uh, filled by the, the flow of water in the, in the canal. It's, it's the tide rises and falls. So you have to be, if, if, again, as I said, if you want to go to see the locks, you have to go uh, at low tide to be able to see the original locks. And this is the turnaround area, like a turnaround basin right inside the canal after lock one. And then looking north from lock one. And this is a restored towpath. Uh, you can walk for about uh, four miles now on the, on the restored towpath. This, I don't know, you can hardly see, but this, it, there is a mild one marker, one mile to the canal end, that's in Bordentown, and 43 miles to New Brunswick. And then there are always interesting sites uh, along the towpath, Bald Eagle and its mate. The Interstate 295 over the towpath, so you're walking along the uh, towpath and, and you go underneath 295 to the east of uh, Route 1. Log in the canal and always interesting things on the logs with the big uh, mushrooms. And then this is the city of Trenton. So the feeder canal comes from uh, Bulls Island and, and merges with the main canal uh, in, in Trenton. And then the main canal, uh, this is the going down, it goes to Bordentown, going up goes to New Brunswick and the big Roebling steel wire manufacturing company a while ago. And this is what it looks like today <laughs> and more of it. And the Star Porcelain Company was, was open when the canal was working and still in, in operation. And from, because they built, uh, they reconstructed US-1, they submerged or they put the canal underneath 
uh, for a distance underneath Route 1, and this is where it emerges coming north. And then looking from that spot north, and you can see the signs on Route 1. And then this is another spillway that uh, near uh, Whitehead Road. And then towpath under Route 1 coming toward the viewer, the canal crosses from west to east. And then on Carnegie Road is will be one of the uh, original uh, bridge tender houses. And that's an older picture of it with a road, still a dirt road. And that this is the only place along the canal where the towpath is actually covered with grass. Most of it's gravel. You know, this is the Assimpunk branch on the left side of the picture and the canals on your right side. And then this is the bridge they built over Route 1. So you can walk along the towpath now uh, from Trenton, actually, all the way up, walk and then cross over and then continue on. And then this is the Port Mercer Canal House. So it's a bridge tender house again. There's the bridge and the canal. That's the bridge tender house you can see. And the canal's coming along right underneath the bridge. And of course, they're spring along the canal. Uh, the canal is always good for different kinds of wildlife. So that's, that's enjoyable. And then this is the dinky from Princeton, which began in 1863. And, and then crosses the canal. And this is one of the turning mechanisms they had in order to, to open the bridge and close the bridge. And then this is, the, I showed you this picture earlier. This is Carnegie Lake. And Carnegie Lake was built around 1906 by Andrew Carnegie uh, to help uh, make possible the Princeton rowing team to have a place to row because they kept getting hit by uh, missiles as they were rowing in the canal. <laughs> so, so he generously uh, uh, dammed the millstone and, and the, uh, the rivers, the river millstone and uh, made this uh, Carnegie Lake. So this is uh, Princeton going Washington Street looking east. That's when it still had the bridge that would open and close. And they had swing bridges, which I think you, if you see the picture that he brought down, you'll see how big the, the boats were. And they had swing bridges so that they didn't have lift bridges, so much larger boats. In fact, as he was telling me, even uh, sailboats with high masts could go on the canal because the, the, the bridge would swing open. So there wasn't anything obstructing the, the boats going through. And this is just pictures down, looking at the bridge from the towpath. And then you get to Carnegie Lake and all sorts of cormorants. And they, they're there all over the place. Uh, there are a lot of fish coming in Millstone River into the, into the lake. I was there one time when they were, um, they were spawning in the, Fish were just fresh, and boy, were the cormorants crazy. They were just going wild. And they share space. Uh, you see the cormorants and turtles sometimes looking cautiously at each other. But And bald eagles are there. Of course, rabbits. Great blue herons. And then they have a fishing bridge. This is the bridge over the Millstone River. And then people are there, always there fishing into the, casting into the Millstone River, not into the canal. And then I was there one time when this, this series of photos, I got this series of photos. The cormorant in the bottom right has a fish in its mouth and the seagull spots it. So the seagull is gonna go try and get that fish. And this cormorant finally says, I'll just go underneath the water and then I, no problem, okay. So this is a barn swallow. 
and here are the cormorants and they just this is right near the dam and they just uh gather and there's the dam without the cormorants and close up then there was an osprey who had caught a fish and he got up in the tree with the fish and the crow came and said how about sharing <laughs> i don't think the osprey was happy about that idea so and then this is the spillway what a different way the spillway looks this is the one actually if you go walk go to kingston and park and walk down to carnegie lake you'll go across this spillway and then this is a lock tender's house at kingston and you can see the length of the lock here that's from the air this is lock eight this is uh okay and then this is the the kingston flour mill uh it's on the right this is the Carne carnegie lake is at the top and then the dam and then it goes into the millstone river and then the the flour mill is the lower right corner of the red building that's a close-up of it and this is this is route 518 canal bridge looking west and looking east and when it was in operation and then this is the riprap uh, that they put in to protect the sides when they had to start the steam boats to pull the the uh, barges in the fall color and the one one thing also about the canal is the waters are still as you know from seeing canals and the reflections uh, are just amazing so if you're interested in photography reflections here's some more are they're just they're amazing everywhere you look so it's always fun to try and get those and this is as you're going now we're going up from Kingston north and this is a place called Little Valley and this is a footbridge there and that's in the winter and then one time I was there these two deer came out on the on the canal so the canal is frozen obviously and they were uh sort of wondering what I was doing but anyway I got a picture of them so. and then this is an essential piece of equipment for homes along Canal Road they need to be able to as they're backing out of their driveway they need to be able to see and this is lock nine lock tender's house and this is lock nine again taken there's a there's a this is a there's a bridge across the lock so that's why it looks so short but the lock actually goes underneath this where you see the the wood there where, where it has lock nine on it and it goes quite a ways further and this is the Grigstown crossing there's the Grigstown uh, bridge tender house and this is flooded time of the canal and as you as you know when we get a lot of rain the millstone floods Brereton floods and the canal can even flood there's the Grigstown bridge tender house and then they had a Grigstown they had a stable for mules in Grigstown so this is where they would change their teams and then this is the canal crossing and then they have these two things called one's called 10 mile run and one's called six mile run and my son when I was driving him to work I always thought that meant there were places you run but they're actually creeks <laughs> so so this is the culvert for 10 mile run you can't really see the openings but there are three openings and then this is the North Plainfield water intake and so this is where the water that comes through the the canal the North Plainfield gets its water supply from the canal and this is the intake and they're 27 miles uh, from New Brunswick this is six mile run looking at it from the east and from the west and then there's this big big tree that's on the on the ground between on um, when six mile run goes very quickly goes into the millstone road river but i have too many pictures of this tree the, the reflections of the roots and everything always fascinated me 
and then rosebud and wisteria. And then this is Blackwell's Mills crossing and the house, Bridge Center House and Blackwell's Mills. And at night and in fall. And this is an old picture of it. And this, this is the, one of the floods. So this is the road that goes across the bridge at Bridge uh, Blackwell's Mills, but it's closed because of the flooding and the millstone. And fall colors, always nice. And a big turtle. And more reflections. The mallard. Bluebird. And this is the, the rocks, the highest uh, rock elevation along the canal are these rocks. And it's only about 400 feet high. And more kinds of re reflections. Buttercup. Of course, we don't, we're not getting this kind of snow anymore. So, uh, but, And this is the uh, Bridge Sanders house in East Millstone. And an older picture of it. And then the, the Franklin Inn is on the right. That used to be a famous inn back in the, the days of the canal. 31 miles uh, to Bordentown and uh, 14, yeah, about 13 miles to, to uh, New Brunswick. Just a typical cul culvert and the creek then flowing on to the Millstone River. The Millstone River is constantly running right by the canal, uh, so it's very close by. And then this is when they started construction of a bridge that you could get from the uh, Colonial Park to the towpath. So now you can go to Colonial Park, enjoy the park, and then walk across the bridge and use the towpath. And then this is the Bridge Tender House and Franklin East Millstone House near Manville. Oops, twice, sorry. And this is Zarapath. Uh, so this is the canal goes right on the back side of Zarapath. I'm sorry, right in the front side, right here. Always different kinds of flowers around. And this is Lock 10 and Lock Tender's house going toward Lock 1. So it's going back toward Bordentown. And this is now going this way, going toward New Brunswick. So you can see the size of the lock, how long they were. And then this is Lock 10 in the fall colors. And then I, I like to get close up pictures of the and make the water so it streams and, and you, you don't get it. So. And then the winter, lock 10. And this is one of the, when it, when it really froze, you got this kind of picture. Oh, and this. And then this is where the Millstone and Brereton Rivers join. And this is from the air. So you can see the, the uh, Brereton coming in from your left and the Millstone in the center. And this is the, the dam on the Raritan River. And again, the nice reflections you can get. And the um, mechanism for canal overflow to the Raritan River. And this is one of my favorite pictures just because the path looks neat. And I was always told when you take a picture like this, never let the let it end, make it go around a corner. So people think they're still going to go. <laughs> and this is the Lock 11 southbound brook. And you can see this is the length of the lock and the bricks in it. And then you can see how the lock at the entrance to the lock, it sort of 
goes out a little bit to help the boats sort of hit, I guess, if they hit it, need it. The center, that center piece where it looks like there's a hole actually had wood in it, and that would help the boats. So if they hit the side, they wouldn't hit the rock, they'd hit the, hit the wood. And this is mile marker eight miles to New Brunswick and 36 to lock one. And then uh, in between Brownbrook and South Brownbrook, I was walking along the towpath. It used to be when you went from the north part, from if you're going from Boundbrook to South Boundbrook and you went from the right to the left and you went, the, the towpath went down steeply and you could go walk uh, toward the canal from there and look underneath and you can see this right underneath. Now they built the towpath up high so people probably don't even see this anymore. But these are all the old turning mechanisms for the for the bridges. And then this is on the on the river. There is a railroad going across, and this is a turning me mechanism to open the bridge, railroad bridge. And this is lock 12. And the spillway near landing lane bridge. Culvert near landing lane bridge. And then this is under underneath, uh, this is underneath landing lane. So you can see the turning turning wheel that their mechanism they had to turn the bridge for landing lane. And then they when they redid the canal, the canal ends uh, right right before Route 18 crosses over, and so that, so this is a spillway taking the water from the canal back back into the Raritan River. And then there, here's Albany Street Bridge close one rail, railroad bridge distant in the Raritan River. And this is lock 14. That's uh, a twi twin lock, like eight. And then looking south uh, to the opening to the Raritan Bay from uh, lock 14, that's a new Route 18 bridge. Now we take you back up to the wing dam and the beginning of the feeder canal. So they built a wing dam to make sure the water stayed up high enough so it could they could take water from the river or the canal. And that's the entrance you saw before. And this is a guard lock at Bulls Island. So it's protect if the water gets there's get too much water coming in, they can divert it back to the river. And if you've I don't know if you've been to Prawlsville, but if you haven't, it's worth going, taking a trip to Prawlsville, and that's just north of Stockton. Uh, and they have, this is a quite a quite a neat place. So it's a Wiki Chioki Creek, and it flows into the canal, and then they have a spillway. So it empties out into the Delaware River. And they have the, in the, the big red roofed place is a, is a grist mill and a storage, storage uh, facility for the grain. And they have all sorts of art things going on at this place, so it's it's a, worth a visit. Um, and it's, it's easy to get to, and then, of course, you're near Stockton or uh, Lambertville. There's the grist mill and, the, and the wiki reflections in the wiki, wiki Chioki Creek. Stockton, Delaware River, Lamberton on the right. Lambertville, I mean, Lambertville. And then Lambertville train station, which is a restaurant now. And then this is Swan Creek overflow, which is right south of Lambertville train station. So the water flows out and then it goes underneath uh, through a culvert and back on, back over to the Delaware River. And then this is the, from the outlet lock over in the, over in Del uh, Pennsylvania, this is the inlet lock bringing the coal where the coal was brought into the to the uh, feeder canal and then on uh, to uh, New York down when it joins the, the main canal and over to New York. So this was the main uh, thing that they built. And it, this the boats were carried by uh, the current in the river. So they made the the. Uh, line go down sort of stream from the Delaware side to the to the New Jersey side. So the current would just carry the boats right across the river. 
And then one time, I, I don't see, I think this is the only time I've ever seen a beaver in the canal. Of course, the canal people don't like beavers. So, uh, this is the Washington Crossing Bridge uh, over the Delaware. And this is another kind of spillway. Uh, so the, the canal, if it gets too high, it flows into this. And when that builds up enough, it goes back to the Delaware River. And then they, this is one of the culverts. Um, this is Jacob Creek culvert, and it's the largest, tallest culvert. I think it's just because of the ground that they had to build it in. And there are two pieces, this one and the one previous. This is Elisari Mansion, Caldwater Park, Trenton. Canal flows through the park. Prospect Street Bridge, Bridge Tender's House. Calhoun Street, Bridge Tender House. Feeder Canal, downtown Trenton, just before it enters the culvert, built when Route 1 was improved. And that's it. You've completed a journey of 66 miles, 44 miles in the main canal, and 22 miles on the feeder canal. I hope you enjoyed your journey. That's it. Oh, any questions? Yep. They got it from uh, upstate New Jersey and across in Pennsylvania. They had a lot of rock, so. So it, it took a lot. You're kidding, not kidding, yeah. Other questions? Which are the best places to kayak on the canal? And I'm going to okay. the Colonial Park of that area I'm getting on. I've also been on Gold Run. Yeah, I think the, I don't, I don't kayak. So you have to have a, no, but I'm trying to think of the longest distance, if you want, is probably between, um, trying to think from between Trenton and, and Lock, uh, Lock 8. It would be lock ten. Would be. Okay, all right. But the, also, you can well. You have to go out. Well, no, you can. Yeah, you can. You can go. Uh, you can also go down closer to to New Brunswick, and you can carry your kayak around the locks, uh, which which uh, which some people do. So you can go between New Brunswick and and the next lock is probably about five or six miles. Okay, right, yeah, right, right. Well, that's the boathouse is right at the end. So you can't go very far if you get in the canal there. But if you go on the other side of the, where I showed you where the water coming down into the, uh, into the uh, Brereton River and get in there, you can go quite a ways. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful photos. Oh, thank you. You know Jim Amon. Have you ever met him? I don't think I've met him, but that name is familiar. He was, he, he was the retired uh, Delaware and Raritan Canal Commissioner. Okay. And he had um, a love, just like you do, for nature along the canal. It has wonderful, wonderful photographs. Mm -hmm. If you want to ever want to do a book, I would talk with him. Okay. He might he might come up with a couple that you could add okay. uh, that are spectacular because he's done it for years and years and years. One other uh, item, you mentioned the Reading Railroad taking over hauling the coal that uh, that carried you know, was carried by the DNR. Actually, the Lehigh Valley Railroad delivered tremendous volumes of coal to the DNR canal at Coalport. Okay. Um, and then they built their own route directly. Across I think the I saw that in some, something you, you had. I think I saw that. Right. Yeah. And uh, also the Pennsylvania Railroad carried a lot of coal. Um, first, uh, um, after Coalport closed, they moved to South Amboy. Okay. And that was all Pennsylvania Railroad that, that mm -hmm. carried the coal there. Also, uh, the Jersey Central 
carried um, so they were yeah they, they didn't couldn't compete with the uh, yeah many, initially many of yeah. Was carried the coal that used to be carried mm. uh, by the uh, DNR and you also mentioned uh, surviving drop gates and wooden miter gates the Bordentown lock has both miter gates and the drop gates are both there mm -hmm. Uh, years ago, the Canal Society arranged with the Bordentown Yacht Club. They gave us a ride in their boat into okay. the canal, okay. and up, oh, half a mile up into yeah. the canal. That is now prevented because they put the pedestrian bridge over, over the lock too low. You can't okay. get a boat on it. You know, that, <laughs> too that's where we're thinking. All right. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. The, uh, you showed Stockton Street Canal uh, Canal House. That was the headquarters of the Delaware and Merton Canal Commission until the vandalism got so high that they uh, gladly moved up to Stockton. They're in Crawlsville now. Had, yeah. you, you must have a drone. Yeah. No, I have a no. I have a, have a friend who flies airplanes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was the picture you have of Stockton right. with the three cars. But that's the DNR okay. Canal Commission office. Okay. Just north of the mill, right at uh, at Stockton. Yeah. Okay. So, anybody else? Yeah. You mentioned uh, the outlet lock uh, going from Pennsylvania to New Jersey. The, the Delaware River current takes the boats over. Right. How do they get I, back to I, I never uh, asked that question. So. <laughs> Same way. Same way. They angle the boat uh, to yeah. to. Make oh yeah okay right oh, right sir. okay i can see yeah yes. uh, yeah they just angle the boat opposite right the right okay and the mules no they ride the boat they swam um, well i don't think that the, the mules were on either side so they wouldn't no, be the mules walked across the lambert mill bridge oh okay. they did not ride the boat right. <laughs> or swim but they did the same thing in both they walked across the bridge and not on the boats. Other, other questions? Other question online. Uh, how many lock tender houses are preserved in total, or is a percentage of the original that were built? Bill, you I'd have to. I'd have I'm to. sorry, I didn't hear your question. Uh, how how many lock tender houses uh, have been preserved, or I guess are really standing? There's still still sixteen. I had. I would talk to the the, the DNR Canal oh, Commission historian, Vicky wow. uh, Churko. If, if right. I thought he was retiring though. Really? No mm -hmm. All right. The uh, Canal Commission. Let me comment on that, that the Canal Society has been working with the DNR Canal State Park, and we gave them uh, three projects last year on the, the Kingston uh, block tender house. Okay. Repairing uh, roof damage and then wall damage inside, and then uh, we repaired windows at the Briggs Town uh, okay. barracks, All right. and then we're working on the... Uh, uh, the British Andrews house there. So we good. have a uh, okay. very good relationship going there with uh, uh, the Tatakia uh, new um, superintendent. And uh, we gave her a bunch of money to work here, and she's doing a marvelous job of making good use of it. Any more stuff online? That's it for the online question. Okay. I got one. Okay. So, so the bridge that's spring bridge, what powered them? No, they were the, the what? The swing bridges, the power. Spring bridges were uh, swing. powered swing. by manpower. All right. Yeah. yeah, you can see the, um, the bigger, heavier bridges had a key that went down in the middle, and uh, they walked around in a circle with right. that key, and it went open by gear. You can see the railroad bridge uh, that is just. Um, north or east of uh, uh, Southbound Brook. Uh, that was the, the bridge that came all the way across the Raritan River. The, that part, that part of the bridge is gone, but the part over the canal is still there. That you can see the keyway up from the track level, and uh, it turns a gear, and that was turned manually. Okay. Yeah, I had a picture of that that set in the center of the mm -hmm. of the. Uh, Canal 
uh, just going toward New Brunswick from South Boundbrook. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one because we have ridden bikes almost the entire length of the DNR. Mm -hmm. And when we get from um, South Downbrook, where there's a beautiful walk, mm -hmm. what's to the east where you get connected to the Garberton River? Is it gone? Is it? Well, you, okay. At that point, you're going north and south, uh, not east and west, but from South Downbrook to uh, Landing Lane, it's a, there's a towpath. Once you get past Landing Lane, uh, bridge, then it goes it enter, em, empties into the back into the Raritan River, so you can't go beyond there. Uh, is there um, some remnants of the of turnaround on the Raritan River, like at Boyd's Park? Because the kayak on the Raritan okay. River, there's something there that looks like it was a structure. Yeah, it was a uh, they built a they were building a lift lock. Or not a lift lock, they were building a wing dam, which they never used. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. One final thing about DNR Canal there's actually a small, Tim, don't run away. <laughs> There is a small version of the DNR Canal in in the brewing. Uh, it was a project that was started a while ago and sort of got off track. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I think it might, might have found a new home. Yeah, so there's these two uh, gentlemen who were involved. The, the organization that's kind of in charge of DNR Canal, DNR Canal Lodge, um, and uh, these two gentlemen had this idea of doing the whole canal model. And it's going to be water, and there's going to be locks, and there's going to be bridges. It's going to be a big thing. And originally, it was going to be um, down in Lambertville. There's a thing. What's the name of that farm? You know, the top of your head. I'm getting old. I don't remember this. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> um, and that's where we're going to put it. And then that fell through. And then recently, the city of Lambertville um, Acquired his other property. Should yes. not Holcomb House. There you go, Holcomb House. You're doing the something. Sorry, I didn't even know that. <laughs> um, and it's it, you know it's an old house. The house is actually walking and stayed there, and then there's a modern house. But they have this big um, grassy area in the back with a little garden and so on. And we're trying, trying to get that to be the site to put this big lock model. And I think it's before the Lambertville Town, Lambertville Town Council haven't heard anything in a while. But hopefully, if that comes to fruition, then if you come down to Lambertville, Lambertville is a really great town to visit all stores and restaurants and the canals there and so on. Um, you can see this, this canal model, and there'll be days when we have it open and be offered. And they're actually building model boats that will go through the canal and go through the water. So stay tuned. You know, when it happens, if you follow the Canal Society website, Facebook, and all, we'll definitely promote it. That, is this going to be 13 feet long or 40 feet? No, it's going to be, uh, yeah, more like 40 feet long. It's, it's pretty, 40? I don't know the exact dimensions, but more I'm like an idea 40 feet. Yeah, like sliding through. Well, you 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 model railroad guys, watch out. You just, you know, yeah, <laughs> you got a model, model canal. Yeah, but that, that paperwork me. belongs. To okay, the anyway, area. uh, do we have any announcements? You know, we can tell about the Fort Lou. Absolutely. Please remember we have events coming up. We've got the 10th at uh, at Breadlock Park. We've got the 24th of June uh, with Greater Byram uh, Waterloo Canal Day. We need help, but we, that, that's going to be a full court press because we have more buildings open. We're going to be actually uh, in the grist mill, in the store, in the front gate. Um, and so we need a lot of volunteers. Please come and see us. Beers at the sales tent. Bill. How did your volunteer luncheon go? Very well. I fell asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> we were wondering where you were going. Yeah, we were wondering. We said we tried to save a sandwich for you, but it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, folks, um, volunteering is fun. Talk to a lot of interesting people, um, do a lot of interesting stuff. Um, it's not hard. 
it's it's easy and uh, we really need your help. So come and see us. Bobby, where 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 is Bobby? Bobby, she the girl. Yes. She will take your name and not pester you, but uh call on you once in a while to, to help us out. Um okay, once again, um any any announcements? I don't Okay, we're going to pick up the dog and pony show, and we're going to open up the uh, the office and the archives again. So please, you know, gather in there, um, eat some more food, and um, we're going to have to we're going to clean up the space. Thank you. Yeah.